My name is Faye. Faye. Um, yeah. Yes. So we were talking about negative emotions before, and when I like travel around the world and experience global warming, you mentioned those tribes in these areas, and they are the first ones to get damaged, and they are disappearing because of this, and the fires in Australia, and yes. these are the things that really saddens me or make me angry. Yes. Um, but in a way, I also feel that I'm glad I'm feeling this. Um, being sensitive and being able to to feel that, um, so my question is like, when I surrender to to love, or what would I feel, or what would be the solution for the situation that I'm feeling? So let's take the experience you have of this anger in a way, this sadness, you know, of the state of the planet. So there are different ways of living life and the first and most important thing is that you empower yourself because if you are not strong, you are not quiet and you are not surrendered in love, you cannot serve the other. And yeah, it's impossible because unless you are in that state of the experience of love, of the truth within. You can't love the other. And the world or the planet is in this state because of not enough people being in touch with the truth of their own existence. We have climate change, but where does climate change come from? It comes from the greediness of human beings, doesn't it? Why is a person greedy? One who is in touch with the truth of their own existence will not be greedy. So finally, the ills on the planet come because human beings are not in touch with the truth of their own existence. They are operating from ego rather than from truth. If you want to change something in this world, wouldn't it be that the first place to do that is with yourself. Because if you start to operate from the Truth, those three people around you will feel it, will be impacted by your own changed state. We cannot impose this top-down on humanity. We cannot say, hey, all of you now, you have to surrender to the Truth doesn't work that way. It is only from individual to individual, you yourself. So what will happen if you start to practice feeling your own soul, if you start to feel it, if you start to even realize that it exists in the first place and you start to bend to it, try to listen rather than the ego, try to say, what is it telling me, you know? Is it a yes? Is it a no? Ask, communicate with it. Gradually what will happen is that your entire state becomes more joyous. If you're more joyous, you also don't harm the other because you're living from the Truth. Obviously nobody is that interested in changing themselves, they want the world to change. Because changing oneself is a tough job, changing the world is much easier because it only happens in the thinking, no? We have so many conceptual movements of changing the world. It's, these are top-down actions. We want to change this, you know, climate change, this change, that. We'll change the world, but actually the world only will change if the individual changes. Which is why this, this practice that is taught here is so amazing, because it is so empowering. The moment you start to actually do this, not as a concept, not hearing me and saying, oh, that's an interesting idea, it's a possibility, yeah, maybe. But actually say, okay, I am going to try now to feel my soul, my master, the antaratman, the source, and I'm going to see if this action I'm doing is emerging from 
the impulse of that soul or is it the ego again making me do something? If you start to discern, can you imagine how many of your actions will start to emerge more and more from the truth? And the more your actions emerge from the truth, the less suffering there'll be in your life. The less suffering there is in your life, the less suffering there'll be around you. It's how it works. Of course, I'm not saying don't do things for climate change and don't go and, you know, demonstrate in Washington. I'm not saying not to do those things. What I'm saying is that the joy of existence of this life for you comes as you surrender to your own master. It starts there. And from there, gradually, you know what will happen? Suddenly you're... You know, everybody's fighting with their families, fighting with their boyfriends, their girlfriends. Those fights will start to reduce. There's already more joy surrounding you. And you start to become a source of strength to others who then become stronger. It has to begin with oneself. And you know what also is quite interesting, Faye? The more you are in that surrender state to the Truth, the less you will be affected emotionally by the fires in Australia and the more you will take concrete action to prevent it from happening. That's the amazing thing. Because there are so many people around the world who have been so shocked with what has happened in Australia. I had in Tiruvannamalai, there was a woman, she was just weeping. That shock is so deep. And the way one deals with it is not that one is helplessly sitting there, but one starts to surrender to the Truth, surrender, surrender. Every small action coming from the Truth changes more than every big action coming from ego. And you'll feel better also because you know, hey, whatever it is, I'm at least trying to discern between the ego and the Truth and I'm acting from the Truth. Even if I bring solace and comfort to one person in this world, I will feel better. And you can only bring solace and comfort to another when you yourself are in a state of Truth. I'm not saying that you have to have a halo and walk around with, you know, diaphanous wings, but it's more like just the more you are in that state, the more you'll be able to give to the other. And the helplessness dissipates instantly because helplessness is ego's way of keeping you as a victim, as a slave. Anytime you feel helpless about something, it's the ego. For sure it's the ego, what else is it? You won't feel helpless if you act from the Truth. Remember it. In those moments when the helplessness feeling comes, when the anger and the sadness at what is happening on the planet, remember, you can change it by tuning in and acting from the Truth yourself. Maybe the Truth tells you, don't get on that plane at all. Maybe the Truth tells you, you have to fly 20,000 times around the Earth. You never know because the Truth doesn't care for what society says or thinks, it just doesn't give a hoot about it. It's, an, it's independent of all ideas we have about good and bad and, you know, right and wrong and all that stuff. So you go to your own Master and consult and act from the Truth fearlessly. Even if you make a mistake, it's fine. Even if it's not the Truth and it was the ego in this case, it's still better to take that risk than not to ask at all, not to refer to the Truth at all, to the Soul. You'll feel strong then, you know. That is spirituality. Spirituality never works top-down. The moment something happens top-down, it's religion. That's why the world is in this mess, because of what religion has done or how religion has been misused and misinterpreted to suit the, the ambitions of greedy capital around the world. You want to fight that? Go with the Truth. And 
within hours within days something fundamentally will change and it's not that you're blissing out and you're in this state of you know wow man it's all cool no it will be cool but you won't be blissed out you'll be blissed in you'll be present and it will be cool and you'll be actually able to do concrete things to change this situation on our beloved planet can i ask another question yes no one has a hand up so you can yes thank you um because i'm new to this practice of surrendering when you mentioned the master um maybe i don't remember how the master looks like in my childhood but how can i know this is the real master this is not just in my imagination or i just created in my head in the beginning one doesn't know but after a while it slowly starts to show itself anyway if you're going with ego then you're anyway going with it so you might as well start the exercise and even if you make mistakes you would have gone with ego anyway so you can go with it anyway and after a while what happens is suddenly you start to say hey no this action is not coming from that deep thing it's it's weird okay leave it ask again feel again gradually you go into a state where you really start to discern and you know okay whoa this is the ego and you're not looking at the ego we don't want to look at that stupid thing one doesn't need to look at it we don't need we already have too much of it we've been conditioned into into oblivion and even if it were oblivion it would be good we've been conditioned into into madness with what society has done to us so let's not look at the ego let's look at the truth after a while the identity that's even looking at it all falls away and it's just the system is just in a state of doing doing the bidding of the truth just from moment to moment so don't uh, feel unsure just do it then after a while you'll suddenly say hey no 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 this doesn't feel like the truth because when you go with the truth there is a joyousness in the system when you go with the ego there is a misery in the system it's very subtle sometimes sometimes it's very big practice experiment with what i'm saying it is a sadhana this what is being spoken about here it's a sadhana a sadhana means a spiritual practice and it's very clear the sadhana is simple it is take up an identity rather than what is normally spoken about giving up the identity i'm saying take up an identity what is your name fe what's your mother's name lu lu and where were you born china so then you take that identity i'm fe i'm daughter of lu that's enough you don't need more if you take more than it starts to grow into ego again and this fe is just doing things from moment to moment and that's all this life is about it's not about anything more than that one can be dogmatic about a spiritual practice it's all right and then that practice is to in each moment discern if the action you're planning to take or the action which is emerging is emerging from the truth of the system or is it from that loud ego stuff and you start discerning in the beginning you can't discern after a while you realize that the truth actually is a very subtle impulse whereas the ego is in sentences and it's loud and you start to discern aha uh -huh, okay and as you gradually take up this sadhana the fruit of that sadhana will appear and the fruit is simply the ability to discern what is what it's a tough practice but i mean it's also so many years of of conditioning of ego that you have to deal with also no 
you practice it. You can come back if you're here and ask further once you've practiced. It is a sort of a radical practice actually because it simplifies things to the point where there's no escape anymore into into blissing out and into embroidery and icing on the cake and so on. It's just very, very here and now, this moment, eyes open, present, aware of every movement of the body and just present. It's tough, it's challenging, but it is the sadhana. <laughs> and what is so amazing is that you just get action coming. Action comes from the truth. Yes, can come.